Rashad C. Dragon. Today I'm here with a special guest, Rashad, the founder of The Big Foods, who recently visited some relatives in India. Because of this, I thought he would be the perfect guest for this video about Indian food. Just out of curiosity, how do you say hello food enthusiasts in Hindi? So, it is Namaste Kane Ke Shokin. Thanks for having me on the channel that I own. Yay! Like Tausi Dragon said, I was recently in India and got to, you know, eat Indian food. I mean, I do that every day, but like, I got to eat Indian food in India. So it was like only my, it was only my 14th time, so like my billionth. So that's, that's, that's an upgrade. Nevertheless, it was amazing, and I'm here to talk about it with my good friend, Southie Dragon. Okay, so how about you start us off, Rashad? Okay, so I'll start out with the basics of Indian food. So all Indian food is extremely flavorful, there's, there's you know, like tons of flavors, spices, ghees, oil, fried vegetables, meats, all these different types of stuff, and it's all mixed together, and makes super flavorful food. As a lot of people might know, it's Indian food tends to be very spicy too. This is the flavor for most people, unless you're a wussy. But otherwise, it's great. There's also many different types. There's like North Indian, South Indian, Tandoori food, Indo Chinese, like tons of different types. But um, they're all great. We'll talk more depth about all of them later. And there's also Mithai, and that is basically Indian food. And yeah, that's the basics of Indian food. Take it away, Saucy Dragon. Yeah, so as Rajab was saying earlier, Indian food is also very hinged around spiciness and spices. Now, spices are super important to Indian culture, and they produce around three-fourths of the world's spice. Some of the most popular Indian spices worldwide are coriander, turmeric, cinnamon, and black pepper, which is considered to be the king of spice. Wow, that is a lot of information about spices. I had no idea Indian food is that much spice, by the way. Shame on me. But, as I mentioned earlier about the major types of Indian food, we won't be able to cover them all, because there's a lot, but we will cover a few. So starting off, we have tandoori, which is my favorite type of Indian food. It's called tandoori because it's co cooked in a cylindrical oven called a tandoor. I hope Saucy Jack can throw up an image right here of that, but it's called a tandoor, hence the name tandoori, which is the name of the food that comes out of it. And traditional ones, we use flour and charcoal, and were made of stone. That's old. So now we have modern tandoors, which are made of metal and powered by electricity ink or gas, but they still come out with the same delicious food. My favorite is tandoori chicken. That's my favorite Indian food of all time. Also stuff like tandoori naan, tandoori roti, tandoori... Basically every kind of Indian food can be tandoorized. And there's also, next is North Indian. Most of the foods that you've eaten, if you're not Indian, you live in the US, most of the Indian foods you've eaten are probably North Indian. Like samosas, naans, curries, that kind of stuff. And North Indian food usually has um, thick, creamy gravies that are moderately spicy, like, you know, curry, how it's like chicken or something with uh, thick stuff around it. That's what North Indian food is known for. There's also amazing vegetarian dishes because ripe and delicious fruits and vegetables are available all year round there. And so those are amazing, which I know Saucy Dragon will appreciate being a vegetarian. And dairy products play a huge role in desserts. So that's just some stuff about North Indian food. And next is South Indian food. And a big thing there is spicy, super spicy. The hottest of Indian food comes from down south. And it also, in every single meal from South India, there's something else. You know it. You love it. It's rice. There's rice in every meal. Literally everything. There's rice. And it's usually mixed, it's always combined with like either curries, sambars, so either also sambars and dal, which are both lentil soup based things, or sabzi, which is like um, fruits or vegetables that are cooked and then covered in like sauce and then mixed with the rice. There's also chutneys, which come from South Indian cuisine, which are like kind of like guacamole but Indian. And then there's like a bunch of different there's like tomato chutney, tamarind chutney, mint chutney that you like dip. Um, dosa, which is a kind of kind of a bread, which is also from South India, which is like a type of Indian bread that you can dip in there, or you can dip naan or roti in there. And then next is Indo Chinese, which I actually only found out about when I just went to India like a week back. Like we, when I went there, I had um, Indianized chow mein, which I never 
seen before. But India, Indo-Chinese is like, so you have Chinese style food like chow mein or dumplings. But they're, instead of having, you know, normal Chinese flavor, like spices and stuff added on it, it's Indian spices and flavors that are put in there. Which makes them, in my opinion, a lot better. But that's in the Chinese, and there's also modernized. So this isn't really an official type. I think it should be. So, for example, when we went, when I went um, just a week ago, a week or two ago, we were coming back from the Himalayas to us about the world from a little place called Thalai, which is amazing. You should go there if you ever go to India. And we were coming back down to Delhi. It was about a, like, 10-hour drive, so we stopped for lunch, obviously. We stopped at McDonald's. But, first of all, um, but in... McDonald's, as South and Dragon will talk more about later, beef and pork are taboo in India, which you will learn more about when you, um, when he explains it to you, <laughs> but they're taboo, so they did not have beef or pork, so no burgers, which is what McDonald's is all about, so they had chicken, everything was chicken or paneer, or like vegetables, but why I'm saying Marais Indian food is because there was something called a dosa burger, which, you know, dosa's Indian food, there was butter chicken burger, butter chicken is a traditional, like, Kind of like chicken curry, but different. There was like mixed spicy paneer. Paneer is what the Hindi word for cottage cheese. Cottage cheese, if you know what that is. There was a big spicy paneer wrap. There was mek alu. Alu is Hindi for potato. So it was like a sandwich with like a potato kind of patty. That was like fried. So they had all these modernized, like in burger style Indian foods. That's what I have for the different types of Indian foods, and I'll pass it on to Sassy Dragon. Right, so, as Rashad mentioned earlier, I'm vegetarian, so I think it's very interesting that Indian food and culture are actually really heavily affected by vegetarianism, and 39% of Indians are vegetarian. 81% restrict meat consumption in some way. Pork and beef are also both taboo, as Rashad also said. According to two of the most prominent religions in India, Hinduism and Islam. In Hinduism, it's beef, and for Islam, it's pork, because cows are sacred in Hinduism. And therefore, there are only two real options for meat in India, chicken and lamb. But lamb is too expensive often, so most people just end up eating chicken in India. Yeah, so, thank you. And um, so... The reason it says just and eating chicken, the reason there's a lot more vegetarians is because another reason is because, so like a big reason for it is since be, pork and beef are taboo, the, and then lamb is too expensive, the, really the only meat is chicken, and you get tired of chicken at some point if you're eating it your whole life. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot easier for Indians to stop eating one meat than it is for like us Americans to stop eating beef, pork, lamb, chicken, fish, like everything. All they really have to worry about is stop eating chicken and maybe fish if they live by the coast. Yeah, so now I'm going to do snacks. This is a very small thing. It just so there's a lot of Indian snacks like you might know about samosas. A lot of people seem to know about, but samosas are like there's like it's like fried bread kind of thing, and on the inside it's stuffed. And then there's bujia, which is kind of like I don't really know how to explain it, but it's like um all these different things mixed. It's like dry, and you can eat it. You can also make it mix it up with like sauces and stuff, and it becomes like a more wet kind of food. And there's something called rusk, which I think is highly underrated. You can find it in the U.S. It's great. You can also find bougie on samosas in the U.S., but I don't know why I said you can find it in the U.S. But rusks are basically like this crunchy bread kind of thing that you dip in like tea or coffee, and then it tastes really good. So I recommend those if you ever have a chance to eat them. But yeah, that's all I really have for snacks. And stuff that you can take it away with cost of food. Yeah, so it might come as a surprise to you, might not, but everything in India is less expensive than it is in the U.S., since the rupee, which is the Indian currency, is a, a much lower value than the United States dollar. Obviously, this pertains to a food as well, and some examples of this are, it's only 36 cents for an averagely sized water bottle, $3.80 for an average fast food meal, whereas in the US, it can be around $6. And it's $5.30 for one kilogram of yellow cheese, which is obviously the logo of the big foods and in india yeah. just as a little story rashab bought five burgers three large fries four large sodas two veggie puffs and a happy meal and one small soda for 18 dollars usd so i just think that's kind of crazy 18 dollars for all of that stuff 
Yep, I can confirm that really happened. And by the way, I did not eat that all myself. It was shared <laughs> among our family. <laughs> but anyway, next is cooking. This is like how food is cooked like in India. And it usually starts the cooking process with frying of onions, tomatoes, and spices. Because that is usually in a lot of Indian food. Tomato and onion to add flavor and spice, you know, add spice. And then there's also lots of lentils, like refined wheat or rice flour or chickpea flour, or etc. They also steam. Steam steaming is often a big part. Like momos, which is like what we talked about Indo Chinese earlier. It's like Indian dumplings kind of, or idli, which is like rice, where it's just it steam into like a little patty kind of shape. It's like a rice steamed rice patty kind of thing. And then the carbohydrates in most Indian meals are going to be bread based, like parantas, rotis non stuff like that and yeah it also um lots of indian cooking there's a lot of parts to a meal i'd say personally because if you take like one dish like if i was going to eat dinner so it can be but like there's what i'm trying to say is there's a lot of range in how much there could be just rice and lentil soup but the lentil soup will have multiple different types of lentils and then it'll have the stuff made to make the soupy part and it can go far more complex, like the chicken, which involves like tons of different spices, like onion, onions, tomatoes, a bunch of other different types of like vegetables and fruits, and then it all combines together. Then you have the chicken, obviously. Well, there's, it can get complex or it can be simple. But in Indian cooking is is pretty hard, I'd say. It's harder to cook. It's, the foods are harder to cook than like most American foods. It's not like you can take a, like when you make a burger, like grill it, just slap between two pieces of bread. There's a, it's more steps than go into cooking Indian food. But yeah, so that's all I have to say for Indian cooking and Saucy Dragon. Take it away. Yeah, so many popular modern staples in India are chili peppers, potatoes, and tomatoes are made from those things. None of these are actually indigenous to India, though. They were actually brought over to India by Portuguese traders in the 15th and 16th centuries. They traded with these people who brought them over from their own lands and lands that they settled. And from then on, they've become modern staples. The famous Indian red curries are actually made with tomatoes. That's interesting. Some Indian food that a lot of people eat didn't actually made on Indian ingredients. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Well, now we'll be talking about desserts, or as they're called in India, mitai. And there are lots of different types. There's from laddus to burfis to peda, well, which is kind of a type of laddu, and many more. My personal favorites are basin laddu and gujia. So, unfortunately, I don't get to talk about gujia here, but gujia is like a, it's like a sweet, like, bread, crunchy bread crust on the outside, filled with, like, sweet stuffing on the inside. It's really good. You should try it if you can. But I do guys talk about laddu. So laddu is usually made from flour, fat, such as like ghee, which is um, like stuff from a cow. It's like butter and like milky stuff mixed together. And sugar. Chopped nuts and raisins are also added. And by the way, these are made into a little ball kind of thing. Um, it's really great. I actually have some downstairs from India. Yippee. But um, they might have originated around 2600 BCE. Don't know for sure. But that's when it seems that they did come from and they were invented. But there are different types, such as basin laddu, coconut laddu, similar laddu. And they're different because, like, of the different main, the main ingredient changes. Such as basin flour and basin laddu, or similar and similar laddu. And there's also burfi, which is dense and milk-based. By the way, um, so the way things it origins from is burf, which is snow in Hindi. And burfi is called burfi because it's milk is like snow. It looked like snow to them. And burf is what they called snow. So hence burfi. They also put nuts in burfi sometimes. There are different types. Just like ladu, it's just main, really the main ingredient. Like basin flour and basin burfi. Or kaju, which means cashew. Like cashew flour. And I, that's a thing. It's some kind of cashew ingredient in kaju cutli. Kaju cutli means is the same thing as kaju burfi. So... That's what we got for Matai. 